Moose Lake. Um, we wanted to offer free public Wi-Fi and iPad training. Uh, Carlton Public Library did not have any Wi-Fi at all, so we we got them a, a hotspot to use for their library so they could have uh, free internet. And Moose Lake and Cloquet did. So we we just uh, went with the iPads. Uh, we also got uh, Chromebooks for, for each location. Uh, training sessions were kept to, to less than six. I think Mary kept hers about four. Um, it's a lot of work for one person to train more than, more than four to six people, um, especially if they're beginners. So we kept the class sizes small. Uh, and we were able to train 165 people over 47 sessions between the three libraries. Um, I don't know if, uh, well, at least from Moose Lake, that doesn't include a lot of the one-on-one -on -one questions that come in on a daily basis to, uh, you know, like Bob said, with, with new devices, how do you do this, how do you do this? And we're more than happy to, to handle those as, as they come in. So uh, that number is uh, probably closer to 300 if you count those two. Um, we we each got three um, iPads. Um, there's a couple over there on the table. Um, if you want to look and play, all this stuff is for you to look at and play with later if you'd like to. Um, and they they went well. Um, we we each developed our own PowerPoint and training program, and and we we brought in a trainer at the beginning. Some of the challenges we ran into with this uh, project were uh, being able to have enough knowledge to, to go into in-depth training um, as, as ourselves. Um, so finding someone who had the time and the knowledge to go in-depth and train the trainers um, was an issue. I think if we were to do it again, we'd have someone lined up prior to starting because uh, it did delay us a little bit on getting started. Um, the next uh, project we did, uh, this was just for Moose Lake and Cloquet, it was Makerspace and Hotspot. Uh, we had, we called Techie Toys um, to be creative. Uh, we had a 3D printer, some Raspberry Pis, which I didn't throw out there, but those are little coding devices. Uh, and drones and droids, 3D pens, uh, those are all there. Um, you can use a 3D pen later if you want to be frustrated this morning before you go home. <laughs> But they're all there. There's been two Raspberry Pi classes set up, and um, Moose Lake has started the 3D printing requests. We've got a form to fill out on um, the city website for that. Uh, Cloquet has yet to start that. They were focusing more on the hotspots. So we'll get to that later. Um, challenges for this. Um, be finding the time to, to have classes. I know at Moose Lake, I try to do at least one or two a month. Um, and I do what, what Bob does also, just I call it Tech Open House. And I have all this stuff laid out on the table and other devices. Uh, I also partnered with uh, a group in town called AWIN, which is a senior citizen group. Um, they provided us with a grant for all, more technology. So there's about twice as much stuff that we just lay it out and people come in and they can play with it before they buy it or if they have questions they can bring their own stuff in and we, we do a workshop with that too. Um, so with the school they, they focus more uh, with the kids and, and adults and we focus more generally with the seniors are the ones that show up here. So that, that has been fun. I guess the, the best part for me has been being able to play with all the stuff. Um, that you normally don't get to play with on a, on a daily basis. So I um, was able to create some of the 3D stuff that, you know, it's time consuming, but it's, it's fun. And there's also some practical uses for a 3D printer. Um, there's a guy that printed a, a part for his recliner to fix his recliner. So it's been good. Uh, well, for, for, for us, we, we're still looking for <coughs> volunteers to help us um, with, because like Steve said, it's the time and not enough staff, so we've been trying to reach out and find you know, older kids even that are tech savvy and want to play with the stuff, but I think we need some help with uh, schools maybe and finding kids for us or just even interested adults. And I think we might make a trip to the maker space.
this community in the move and see if there's anybody from Cloquet that goes there that might want to volunteer with us. So we're still working on it. Our first um, 3D printing project, we're going to try, we're going to have kids do little ornaments. And <laughs> just a just a, a fun little project I guess for Christmas. Yeah, yes. Um, actually, at, uh, you guys have a three D printer? Yes. So it's part of a class, actually. Also, well, it was the same uh, concept, the maker space, the. Um, it's more it's more of an area where kids can experiment. It's not part of a structured class. Any other questions? Uh, the next part of that project was uh, the hotspot project. But this is this is a hotspot, and I don't know if this is what buses have or not. Um, but we at the libraries of Moose Lake and Cloquet are. Uh, checking these out to patrons they can take home and if they have Verizon service that is available to them um, we give them unlimited internet at home to do whatever they want with um, they do need to have uh, a library card so it is limited to um, our, our area um, ours even goes down into Pine County a little bit too um, but this you know, we're getting 20, 20 meg speeds off of this, um, you know, in some areas, uh, even better in town. So they do well. Um, I used this last night to upload uh, the city council meeting on Facebook Live the whole time, and it, it worked really good. So uh, we began circulating them to the uh, They've been checked out more than 30 times, um, which is, is well, because we only have a seven day checkout. And um, with this and the other program with the iPads, um, we're going to start to check out those items with these as well. So not only will they have internet, but they can take a device with and, and use it if they don't have a computer at home. And, and I think that's an important thing for, for us to let jobs and training know or any of the other organizations that are concerned about people not having access to internet. Like a week's time, how much uh, bandwidth do they use on average? Do you know? Oh, I should have checked that. I, I don't know, but it, they're well within. Verizon has kind of like guidelines, and they're well within that. Like we haven't heard anything. There was a, a library in southern Minnesota that they cautioned us about that constantly went over the limits. So we um, we're not there <laughs> for us on a, on a typical weekend. Um, it's between 20 and 30 gigs of data that they're using, which, you know, if they were to buy one of these from Verizon, that's $150 a month right there. So it's, it's big savings to those that can, can use it. But with this government account, we do we do have unlimited um, use. Uh, so like this last night, night almost 20 gigs last night. So there's a lot of data that can and, and people have tested it. Um, I've had it go to Barnum a couple of times. They said, well, it, it's not the strongest signal, but they're still able to get a signal at whatever cabin they have. And then uh, within Cloquet, we have some jump spots. And somebody brought it out to their cabin in the big lake, and they said it was clicking along really fast. So. Good. So our, our goals would be 